We bring in Larry Hess, the county assessor, who is the incumbent in this race, is being challenged. Larry, good morning. How are you, sir? I'm good. Good to be here. Good yeah. to see you guys. And as we found out, how are the how many Great Danes? <laughs> we have four. Four Great <laughs> yeah, Danes. Yeah. yeah, we don't need any more, but we got four. Yeah. So our first guest this morning already flung a term out there. Uh, but we, we, so we're, while we're on that, uh, you don't use the scooper. I'm guessing you use a full shovel when you're taking I it. use a shovel. I do. You have to. You have to. That's a lot of Great Dane. Four of them on top and of that. And one is, is big. One is four big. are, uh, I, yeah. Hey, it's a full-time job. Scooby-Doo is a Great Dane. Yeah. yeah, he was. Yeah, yeah Netflix was. has a new, there's a new uh, Scooby-Doo series coming out on Netflix with real people. No kidding. Yeah, I just saw it in the entertainment report this morning that we did. Have to watch that. I'm not sure. And Larry what, will have to watch that. Yeah. Get his great days. Larry's dog to watch will that. have to yeah. watch that. Or <laughs> dogs right. will have to watch that. Larry, did you hear your challenger's interview with us? Uh, I did, Rob. Yeah, I heard that. There, uh, were, there I, were some accusations made that you're only working two hours a day and napping on the job. Gee. Yeah, well, Rob, you know, that's, that's an outright lie. I mean, you know. Um, you know, he he got on there and uh, he made a lot of accusations that wasn't true. And he honestly lied to WRNR. And if you look at the tape, because I, I did record it, and he told you he didn't get any information from his father at all, you know, which and then a couple of sentences later, he said, well, the only way I get information is from my father, you know. So he just pretty much lied to WRNR, you know, on the radio. He lied about me in several different things, uh, and I've got notes of them. If you want to address sure, them, please. we can, we can take, go through them. Take a moment you and, and defend yourself. Uh, okay. Because uh, there, are, yeah. there are accusations that you're vindictive. If anybody goes against you in the office, they're, they're out. Jeez, that's not true. The lack of the 40-hour work week. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, but anyway, take, take a yeah. moment to Look, uh, address what you uh, like. You know, he's... He doesn't have any experience, okay? So he has to go, he has to attack me in some way. So he's, he's going to do it personally, and then that's fine. You know, he's, he's a fine young guy. He's, you know, he works with his dad as a plumber, you know, and he's been to our house. He's actually done work at our house. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's, I, I've known him. He, his father is the chief deputy in my office, you know that. Okay? Yes, makes for an interesting right. scenario. Yeah. So, yeah, so, you know, but... To get on there and, and make up, uh, you know, stories like that, to say that I work two hours a day, you got to be kidding. You know, I don't get in there at 8 o'clock in the morning because I don't have to hit the time clock. We have our schedules that we can make the way we want to make them to, you know, to make sure we get the work done and, and manage our schedule throughout the day. Mm -hmm. So I do all my stuff in the morning before I get to work. If I have to do errands, I get ready for my day, well, da, da, da. I get in the office early in the morning, mid-mornings. I never leave for lunch. And for him to say I leave at 2 o'clock, his father knows that 5 o'clock every day when they hit the time clock, I'm sitting there when they all get out of there. I mean, that was an outright lie. It's just I don't know why he says that stuff. It's, I'm not going to pick on him because mm -hmm. I'm not here to do that. I want to tell you what I do for the office, but I did want to address a couple sure. of these things. please do. Uh, and, Try to uh, not hit the table, though, too much. It, it goes through your microphone. Oh, I'm sorry. It's all right. Yeah. Well, uh, the questions you ask him, a lot of questions you ask him, he didn't correctly answer them. I don't want to go through all of them, but, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, the, the one of the things was the, the two hour lunch break, I mean, the two hour work day and the fact that I'm sleeping. So I, he's saying, I come to work, I work two hours and I sleep while I'm there and then I leave. Okay. Well, that's, you know, that's I, unbelievable. I don't know if he meant that every day or occasionally yeah. or once in a while or what, but that was part of the. Yeah. Like I say, he knows, he knows that we didn't, that I don't do that. Um, let's see. Um, let's see, uh, I'm not going to go through all those, but, uh, he was, he told you wrong about the salaries, he told you wrong about the, uh, the appraisers in the field. They, you know, I, but I'm not going to do all that either. It's just minor stuff. Uh, 
What was he incorrect he, about in regards to the appraisers in the field? Well, he said, you know, you ask him, uh, you know, how you got about doing appraisals and doing yes. the values and getting that information in. He said that we had appraisers in the field that took that information, that um, took uh, the, the tax class and the square footage and mm -hmm. all that. They are data collectors. They have nothing to do with the values at all. The appraisers gather data, and then so, what happens to yeah, that data? When the data comes in the office, that information is plugged into the computer, but that information is then taken by our team in there that does the, uh, the studies. Mm -hmm. They take all that information. We have to do sales studies, all that information. We have to do uh, 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 new construction costs. We, we go through a lot of that kind of stuff determines – how in those neighborhoods where the values come from they're just data collectors I okay yeah you know, have nothing to do with uh, with the value they don't assess the value they just no. collect the data no and uh, he, he also said if i remember uh that we have an it department that uh that was uh already paid to do the job and so but I wouldn't allow the IT department to come into our office and do any work. That's another outrage. A lot of where you got that from. We, I work with the IT department all the time. We have our own network provider, Global. Mm -hmm. We've had them for, and Bill knows for, I don't know, since I've been there almost. And uh, they, they do our computer stuff because they're tied in with the state tax department, and, mm -hmm. you know. But we share our information with the IT department at all times. I just turned over our whole website to the IT department for the Berkeley County uh, website that we're on there, you sure. know. Okay. We share information, uh, like, for the flyover every year. We do a flyover for, for, uh, for the mapping. Mm -hmm. We split the cost with the IT department. Because all the departments use that information, so we, you know, so we split the cost for that. But that was just another thing he said. It, it was just a, a whole list of things right. that, that. Well, uh, I, I didn't it, mean to get I'm, you started on the know, defensive right. here, yeah, I Blair, but there was a few pretty big, right. you know, yeah. matzo balls hanging out there. I wanted to make sure that we, we yeah. cleared before we began the rest of the interview. Yeah. So, uh, Bill, go right ahead, sir. Yeah, uh, Larry, uh, uh, it's awful difficult to to refute charges. Uh, because it's your your word and his word, so that. But why did Doug Copenhaver uh, jump into uh, into the race? This is a good question. This is a good question. As okay. as supporting Tenary. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. All right. I I don't know the answer to that, but uh, you know, uh, Doug, you know, being a county council and on now a commissioner for for the years he's been in there, he knows that uh, just like you guys did or the commissioners did when they appointed the new sheriff because somebody was oust and they got to get somebody in there, they take applications. They look at the applications. You know, you've been there. And they choose the best qualified person. Why Doug Copenhaver would support uh, Joe with zero in in, in uh, uh, experience working in the office, I have no idea. And uh, it just, you know, and why he would, and I just heard his ad on the radio, you, you know, he's supporting Joe. I would be embarrassed if I was Doug, personally, because, you know, he's supporting a guy that has no experience. It doesn't make any sense to me, Bill. I, I don't know the question to that. It makes me think that there's something behind the scenes that we don't know about. That is the only thing I can think. Well, of. kind of with you. picking up on you. that, Larry. Uh, Doug told me he was he's been friends with the family for a long okay. time, and he was just offering more support to the family. Okay, that's true, and they have they have that could be the case. I'm not. You know, I'm just saying it just doesn't make any sense to me. You asked me the question. Yeah, I don't. It doesn't make any sense. I, don't, I, I, you know? I know I know Doug well, and I respect mm -hmm. Doug. And Doug generally does things because he genuinely believes it's the right thing to do. Being a friend of the family it would be one thing, but it also implies to me that Doug questions your effectiveness in the office. Yeah, yeah, I, and I don't know why. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so there. why don't you talk about yeah. how you believe yourself to be an effective assessor? How long you've been on the job? Yeah. What your what your daily um, outcomes? What you try to accomplish each day? Absolutely. Uh, I've been there. This is my third 
four-year term. I've been there 12 years. I was elected in 2012. All right. Since 2012, every year, and now we're monitored by the state tax department. They come in there, they check what we do with our mapping, they check our appraisers, they check how we key our information, how we validate our sales, how it, you name it. We, Try we not to get, that table there. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> uh, they, they monitor everything we do. For 12 years, I've had a 100% rating from the state tax department. We've gotten everything done throughout the year on time that needs to be done. There's, there's nothing that he could say. Now, he can blame me for whatever he wants to blame me for, but to get the work done, he can't, he can't dispute the fact that we get everything done on time throughout the year, 100% approved by the state tax department. No hands down every year. Office runs smooth. And they claim, well, you know, I don't manage the office. You know, how can you get this work done? How can you dispute the fact that it, it's, there's no problem. It runs great. I mean, so why he's, you know, um, I don't know if he has anything personally against me. I have no clue. But he can't dispute the fact that we don't get our work done and that I'm not managing the office. So begs the that, question okay. then, the guy who's running against you yeah. is the son of your chief deputy. Talk a little bit about where'd that come from? I mean, well, are, is your chief deputy running the office? And um, look, talk a little bit about that. Okay. So I have, I call, we call him Doc, but Curtis, his father, he's my chief deputy. He's there every day, all day long. They open up the office. He gets there about 6.30, 7 o'clock in the morning. I have uh, five other assistants and floor managers that operate and stay there in that office at all times. So if I have to leave and go out or whatever, doing things I have to do or whatever, I've got Doc there as, I've got Doc there as a chief deputy. He's got three assistants that handle the floor and I've got two supervisors in personal property. So my job to be the be the assessor and to make sure the work gets done, that office is covered 100%. If I'm not there, if I have to go out or come back, it's 100%. It, it takes care of itself. I mean, and you know, I've worked under five different assessors over the years. They all had their own schedules. Some of them had to go to Charleston to do a lobby a lot. you got to have people in there that will cover your floor, cover the office, and take care of it if you're not there. So, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, being, it's being watched and covered at all times, 100%. Larry, what, what is, it, is it a 40-hour-a-week job as described? They, we don't have to hit the time clock, but mm -hmm. it's considered a full-time job. What, does, what does the job pay? The job pays the base salary is fifty six seven ninety three. That's, you know, for just your base salary. We get extra uh, bonuses for work done for, uh, you know, for uh, like dog money. We've got 10% uh, of the salary for farm stuff we do and mm -hmm. stuff like that. But All right. it's about $80,000 job. And, and yeah. in a minute or two before Bill asks his question, what is the primary job of the assessor's office in Berkeley County? The primary job for the assessors to make sure, and absolutely, this is number one, to make sure all property gets assessed, personal and real, at a fair market value. That's bottom line. Get the, get the information on the land books and make sure they're done correctly and everybody's treated fair. Absolutely first thing, top, top thing for the assessor. Yeah. Bill? Yeah, Larry, you mentioned you come in uh, mid-morning, work through lunch and leave uh, uh, at the regular time or after the regular time. There's a perception though that builds up if you're not there early that you're shirking your duties not with just you but with anybody that gets there mid-morning that's the image uh i know a lot of folks and i put myself in that category i i felt i needed to be the first one in the office i always tried to do but that was a personal uh, uh personal view uh the fact you get in mid-morning would you admit that leaves the door open for perception that you're not working a full day? It may leave a perception, but it's not true. 
you know, I do things in the morning before I get to work that I need to do because I can't do them when I get to work. When I get to work. For example. For, for example. For example, yeah. I plan my day. If I have to run errands, I go by looking at property on the way in. If I have to view things, depending on the time of the year. Let's say it's during the Board of Equalization. A lot of times I'll leave the office because I have to look at property to make sure if something's going to be put in front of the uh, – you know, the board, you know. So a lot of things I do in the morning I can't do when I get there. When I get there, it's uh, emails all day long. It's phone calls all day long. It's things from all of the – we've got over 30 employees in there. They're always wanting something. We've got customers coming and going. I can't get anything done. I have to do that, and that's the way I make my schedule. In the mornings, I get anything I need to get done in the mornings before I get there. Otherwise, and I don't leave for lunch. When I get there, I'm there all day long and up until 5, 6, 7 o'clock in the evenings. So I might miss a couple mornings and I are in the mornings. I make it up in the evenings. So it balances out. I mean, that's just the way my schedule works. I mean, and it's, and it's not illegal. I yeah. don't have to hit the time clock. Yeah. I mean, I just, just the way my schedule works. And it's, it works fine because the, the office is running great. Yeah, so... Now, you mentioned there's no time clock, and that's true for all government offices, all, uh, all elected officials. You're not on time clock. But that also gives, I think, a burden responsibility uh, to not only the employees but the county residents that you're there doing your job. Uh, and I, I will not argue that. Uh, I'm not, this is not a point-counterpoint discussion. I think that be uh, would not serve either, either of us well. Uh, but you mentioned going and checking certain properties yet you have an experienced paid staff to do that why do you feel a necessity to go back and review their work uh i don't review their work i do in a way because i have to approve their work it, if they have an appraisal come in if we get let's say an appraisal from a, a commercial company that's like this thick uh you know, I've got one commercial appraiser, you know, and I've got somebody I'm training for that job right now. But I have to approve and I have to and be able to understand an appraisal report. You have to have experience with doing that. And before we take something to the county commission, it would, during the Board of Equalization, yeah. let's say, I have to look it over. I have to make sure it's okay because I sign off on that. And if I have to go out and look at property, I do that just to make sure I know what's there, what's in it, and I, you know. So those types of things, I don't review their property just because they reviewed it and I'm just checking their work. I do it because of when I sign off on something, I know it's correct, I check it, you know. that's. Right. Talk about how many, so you mentioned how many people you have on the floor, how many you have out in the field, What's the total number, and are you adequately staffed in the assessor's office? Um, we're pretty much adequately staffed right now. I'm down uh, one appraiser. I've got I've got a lady that just left in personal property. We just hired uh, one that's just started yesterday, matter of fact. And so I'm down one in personal property. I'm down in one in uh, in the real estate uh, area, but. Uh, but we have our appraisers do a great job. They get, you know, with the amount of construction that's in this county, they get those, every one of those houses get picked up. I mean, picked up, I'm saying sketched and brought in, and we get it in the system every year with these guys. They do a great job. How many total, Larry? The, the, total what? Uh, total employees in the office, appraisers. Um, uh, probably about 33, I okay. say, right now. Uh, maybe down 132, something like that. Yeah, mm -hmm. it varies up and down all the time. Yeah, Larry, about a minute or two left here. Go ahead and tell our audience why they should reelect you to the assessor's office. Uh, okay. Um, well, you know, I think it all comes down to uh, experience. Uh, uh, um, that is one thing I think you need to have. Uh, if you don't know what's going on, uh, it's hard to be a supervisor or a manager. 
you know, I went through, uh, I've been in there for, what, 38 years? And uh, they started that reevaluation back in 91, 2, 3, and 4, those three years. Every every year we had trading that went through uh, uh, for the assessors groups that get together. That all the training that we've had over th those years, I've uh, I've had uh, certificates from IAAO, which is International Association of Assessing Officers, in their 101 courses, their commercial courses. I've been certified by the state tax department in almost all of their uh, programs down there. So. Uh, it comes down to experience and knowledge, you know, and compared to my opponent, he, he has, he worked with his dad as a plumber. I, I don't understand why he would even run for the job. To be honest with you, I'm not, I'm not picking on Joseph, but, sure. uh, uh, you know, it's absolutely a no brainer as far as I'm concerned, but, uh, the, the office runs absolutely smooth. We get the work done. Uh, I've been there for 12 years, I've, and, it, and I, I would like to continue to uh, serve the, the public, and uh, I do a, a good job as far as I'm concerned. I, you know, we get it done. And I would ask for uh, the voters to uh, support me again in, uh, on May 14th. Yeah, a clarification, I think. You've been assessor for 12 years. You've been in the office for about 38 years. Yes, that's okay. right. 38 years in the office. Yeah. 12 years as the assessor. Larry, thank you for coming in. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Good to see you guys, and uh, I appreciate being here. Don't yeah. forget to tell you great Danes about that new Scooby-Doo show. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll do that. I'll do that.